Hello again, everyone. Another message through Facebook. So here we go. Thank you for your YouTube videos. I'm working through them and they are very helpful. Do you really think that narcissists know right from wrong or do they hide their bad behavior simply because it gets them more of what they want and they know some of their behavior will put them in jail and they don't want negative consequences? Well, if they know that, then they know their behavior is bad. So you basically answered your own question there. Yes, narcissists absolutely know what they're doing. Anyway, no big deal. I really don't care either way. I was just wondering because of one of the memes you shared on your page recently. We are trying to help a friend of my daughter's who is the last born child of a narcissist mom and grandparents. He is 17 and a half and has two older sisters who are 20 and 21. They moved in with the grandparents when he was two after his dad left, maybe a year or so after an attempted murder that the, grandpa, that the grandma organized. She has, she had a niece and another lady stab him seven times and they went to prison for three years, but grandma got off. Sounds like a wonderful woman. Don't know much about the dad, but he was probably a narcissist too, but he was court ordered not to go near the kids until they were 18 due to physical abuse. He lives in another state. Well, be careful with that because we know family courts fuck things up more times than they don't. Okay, and if this woman was able to manipulate the court enough to get off on a murder she tried to set up, it's pretty safe bet to think that she was able to set up the father as well to make him look like a bad guy and send him away. I'm not saying that's what happened, but it is a very distinct possibility. We have known them for 16 months, and we are 100% here for the boy and the middle sister. The oldest seems to be turning out more and more like her mom, so now I try to keep contact limited, but still friendly with her. Be careful. The boy moved out in May. He lived with us for a couple weeks until we found him till we found him some share accommodation near his work. It was taking him hours to travel from our place on public transport. Otherwise, we would have loved to have him stay with us. He still stays with us most weekends. It was very, very big of you. So everything I am learning is helping me understand what he is dealing with. It is a bit scary as we have been threatened indirectly by the mom and grandma. Granddad died a few years ago. And we have a family of six children ourselves from five years to 16 years old. So we are trying not to be naive to the reality of what they are capable of, but also will not turn our backs on the boy and his sister. So you trying to be civil with the mother isn't really good getting you anywhere if she's still making threats and still harassing you. You can't be nice to the narcissist. You can't be nice to the narcissist. There is no keeping peace with the narcissist without selling your soul to them. Remember that. Remember that. You're going to deal with them. You're going to deal with this fucking bullshit. I honestly love them like my own. He trusts me and we have a special relationship. Our family probably knows more about him than anyone else, and he shares even more with myself. He is really struggling to keep his head above water. I make sure his physical needs are met, have bought him clothes and food, and paid for him to do things with our family. We expect nothing in return, even though his family is always accusing us of using him for his money. He knows he is always welcome here if things don't work out where he is living, where he is now living, but I think he does not really feel confident about how much we really mean that as his family has always scared everyone else off right what he's doing he's protect he's pr he's protecting himself for the ultimate rejection that he usually is always faced in his life so as nice as you are to him as good as you are to him he's probably still having a hard time believing it's for real believing that his family isn't going to fuck this up for him somehow so that's where his kind of standoffishness is, because probably everybody else in his life has been run off by these people. His mental health is bad. I'm hoping to get him counseling, but it's hard to know who would be good. And I feel like I have to get it right from the start, or he may not cope with trial and error with counselors. You need to interview the counselor yourself then. You need to make sure that the counselor has a basis in personality disorders, narcissism, histrionic, and borderline. 
And you need to question them to that effect of what their knowledge is and have them explain it to you. Because there's a lot of therapists out there who claim they know about personality disorders, but they don't. They don't. They're in it for the money. I love your idea of videoing your thoughts and memories of childhood and and such as therapy, I am hoping to get the opportunity to encourage him to do that. It would probably would be very cathartic for him. I'm finding it hard to know how much encouragement, how much to encourage him in the healing from his childhood. I don't want to push him to do things that he's not ready to do, but I don't want to leave him where he is now either. It's a good point. You don't want to push too hard, but you want to always support his decision with whatever it is. You know, don't berate him over it. Don't overdo it but always just be there for him and he'll come along. He still visits them some weekends. He says it's because his sister asked him to. I'm not sure if that's really the only reason though. I'm thinking it's all, it's out of a lot of guilt. I'm sure it is. I'm sure they can guilt him very well. He still talks to her on the phone every night. He still talks to her on the phone every night. She's done, she constantly calls until he answers. He says he doesn't know why, but every time it puts him in a bad mood because he doesn't really want to be talking to them. And he's probably doing it more out of fear than anything else of, of what these people are capable of. When he goes back to the family home, he usually ends up in a pretty bad place emotionally. He's so messed up, but he's such a nice kid. He has so much potential, and I am open and honest with him and try to verbalize, usually through te texting, those positive things I see in him, and more recently on occasion, have told him that I love him a couple times. I'm not sure how he takes this, but I am sure he needs to hear it from someone. And he probably does, but he probably has a hard time believing it or accepting it as well. I know you said you don't like to read, so I understand if you don't get to the bottom of this letter. But I guess I'm just wanting to learn from you. What are the things that people could have done or said for you as a teen that could have been helpful? I mean, really helpful to you. You know, if I had somebody like you that would have actually gotten me out of the house, that probably would have been the best thing. I think what you're doing for him right now is is most likely the best thing for him. You're giving him a safe, supportive place and basically a family, which he can call his own, which he never had. I mean, what you're doing now I don't know what more you can really do from you're offering to get them therapy. You're trying to get it out there. You're letting them know how you feel for them and that you're supporting them. I mean, there's really not much else you can do. And eventually he's going to have to go no contact, but you're going to have to bring up that subject with him very gingerly because the fear of that might drive him right back. He's deeply depressed about something interesting he told me last night. He was at the family's house. He, in recent months, started referring to his mom and Nana by their first names. That, after a big argument, his sister had a friend over and the argument involved her. He was driving with her in the car and he smashed the car. They were both okay, but, but the car was right off. The grandma was basically blaming the friend for the accident. So he got really mad about it. After over a half an hour of this, he wanted to grab a knife, but he walked out instead. Okay, he's got a lot of anger issues. But the fact that he's starting to call them by their names means he's starting to withdraw from them emotionally. That's a very good sign because he doesn't want to acknowledge them as his family. And that's a good sign. Anyway, he was back at the house later that night and was playing with his PS which is what he uses to try to block everything out. But what he said to me was that it wasn't working anymore. The PS was not blocking it, up, it all out. And now about four out of seven days a week, he feels like crying because he's realizing the reality of his own life and it's getting to him. He's realizing that this stuff isn't his fault, that these people have done it to him and now that anger is going out. And now he's having a hard time masking it with, by, by playing video games. So he's, he's reaching that crossroad. And this is not necessarily a bad thing, as long as you're there to support him. But he hasn't. He says he doesn't even know how to cry. Have, have you experienced something like that? 
I know he is very depressed and has nightmares and insomnia. Yeah, I talked about that in a few videos ago where you're afraid to show any type of emotion because it's going to be used against you. I mean, that's very typical of somebody who's gone through this type of abuse. That night, I found out this morning that he had blacked out and that was why our conversation had suddenly stopped, right? He's going into protect mode. He's shutting down because he's having a hard time dealing with it emotionally. It sounds like he will sometimes black out when he really is stressed and extremely tired. Sorry, I better stop typing, but I appreciate it a lot if you get to the bottom of this. Thanks again for posting your videos. I will keep watching them until I catch up. Thank you. I'm sorry where I said if you do get to the bottom of this, it was not that was not meant to be there. I was typing this after midnight, and I was really tired. I have no idea where that came from. At that point, I was just trying to thank you for your videos. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, I know. I was trying to say I appreciate if you read it all. It's fine. It, it's absolutely fine. Because I said, I, I do have some time. I don't normally like to read, but th this is helping me uh, get over that uh, that issue do, doing videos like this. But yeah, I mean, to sum up, you know, you're doing everything you possibly can, you know, based on, I guess, your limited experience with narcissism yourself, you know, you're, you're doing a job that you know, most, most therapists couldn't do, most of the people who've been around this for years couldn't do. You just need to continue supporting him, okay, and doing what you're doing, be there for him. Um, don't challenge him too much, you know, it seems like he's coming down the road on his own. He'll get there, he'll get there, and he probably wouldn't be having these shutdowns and calling them by their first name and having these sort of breakthroughs that seem kind of negative, but they're not really negative because he probably wouldn't have these unless he had the support of a normal family like you and the love of a, of a normal family like you. So you're doing the right thing. But again, overall, what I got out of this video uh, out of your messages, you're trying to keep the peace and be nice to the narcissist. There is no being nice to the narcissist because, as you said later on in your in, in your message, she's still attacking you. She's still doing whatever. There is no being nice. There is no making peace with the narcissist. That's not how they operate. They operate on chaos and discontent and making people miserable. So they see your niceness as weakness, okay? They see it as a weakness, and that's why they're going to attack it. So thank you again for your message. I really appreciate it. I hope that helps. I hope it helps anybody who's watched. And again, if you enjoy this channel, and if you could consider, if you'd like to make a donation to the GoFundMe link in the cam in the description box, I'd appreciate it. And remember, if you do make a contribution and you want a video made about your story, you go right to the top of the list. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again very shortly.